Hi everyone, my name is Cody Rivera. I'm an innovation fellow at Alia, and Alia is a Minnesota-based national nonprofit um, do tank that works with innovative leaders and systems uh, related to child welfare. And I'm going to be sharing with you part one of this short series of videos about my experience in foster care. And I'm going to be talking about uh, my time before foster care and going into it. So um, around, you know, two years old, around, you know, when I was a baby, uh, my family and I lived in Staten Island and we had our own place. We were close to our aunts and uncles who lived across the street from us. And we had a very, very good life in our own home um, and a ton of toys and everything that we could have, right? And for some reason, I don't remember, we had moved to Brooklyn uh, with our grandma and we were living with our grandma for, for a little while. And my grandma is my mom's mother. And I remember it just being a great time. Um, we had block parties and birthday parties and we had bikes, uh, you know, everything a kid could ask for. And I even remember a great memory where there was a corner deli and my mom would go to the corner deli. And this is around the time where pieces of candy were five cents. And she would get us a full bag, a paper brown bag about this big, filled with candy from my sister and I, and we would have, you know, have candy for the night, uh, which was just, just such a good memory that I remember. Um, and ever since we were young, you know, my, my mother always gave us everything we wanted, always provided us with, with, uh, with small things like that and big things like bikes and stuff like that. And, and she always showed us, showed us this unconditional love. Um, and we've always felt it. I've always felt it. Uh, you know, my sister has always felt it. And, and we talk about it till this day. Um, and around the time we were living with our grandma, I remember this very, uh, this very traumatic experience. And my mom got a phone call. And at the time, my grandma was working at a restaurant. Um, and, you know, she'd been working at that restaurant for, for 20 years, I think. But I remember she was on the phone and I went up to her and I was a mama's boy and I was pulling on her shirt. And I saw her face and I had this overwhelming feeling and thought that something bad had happened. And, and the thought was, is that my grandma passed away. And I had that before anything was said. It was this, it was this like connection I had to my mom and, 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 and she hung up the phone and, and all of a sudden she just started breaking down and crying. And, and this was really a pivotal moment because um, and, and a very traumatic moment because it really shifted how we were uh, going to be for the next few years. Ultimately, after my grandma passed away, my family and I, you know, we moved to our, our own apartment in, in Brooklyn. And then, you know, that, that was a great time as well. We had, you know, these really nice bunk beds. And I remember Toy Story being huge and I had Buzz Lightyear and stuff like that. Um, but next thing I remember was moving our stuff into storage, for a reason I don't know why, um, but I just remember that that experience of going to the storage unit, dropping all of our stuff off, and then being in line uh, for ultimately entering shelters, uh, New York City shelters. And we waited in line for, I mean, I think probably 12 hours, and then ultimately got on a bus and then got sent to our first shelter that we ever lived in. And for the next two or three years, we moved around Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, around different shelters. And the reason we moved around different shelters at that time um, was because we, my mom was a huge advocate, a huge advocate for the environments we were living in, for the neighborhoods we were living in. You know, if there's too many roaches, too many mice, if, if the neighborhood was really bad, uh, if there was a lot of violence going on or the schools weren't as good, my mom would always advocate and, and get us removed from that shelter to be put in, in another one. And, and of course, my mom had her problems and her issues that weren't really recognizable to me at that age, um, which is why, you know, life was always so good. You know, when we were living in shelters, um, you know, we, we, we felt fortunate. We felt more fortunate than other kids because we always had everything we you know, clothes and toys and going to the parks, you know, all the important things to a young kid uh, like myself. And, you know, when, when, when we finally got to our last shelter in the Bronx, I remember my mom taking us on a visit to this, uh, to this home in Staten Island. And she was like, do you like it? And she was like, we're going to be moving into it. So ultimately, you know, after going through that process of living in shelters, we got, 
you know, we were back to living in our own house. And this was an amazing moment because it, we had just, you know, looking back at it, my mom had dealt with this very traumatic moment in her life, which was losing her, her mother. And then we went down this hill, but we went right back up to this trajectory of, you know, living on, in our own place. And, and really looking back, I recognize that growth and development from her and that traumatic, traumatic experience. And when we moved into the house, my mom redid all the windows, all the rugs, painted, got all new furniture, all new bedroom sets, computer, living room set, and everything was was like back to normal, like as if we were, you know, two years old in our, in our own house in Staten Island again. Um, but then a few days later, um, we got, or, or a month into living there, it was just before or just after Christmas, uh, investigators came to our house and we were being asked all these questions in private and I didn't really understand why or what was going on what the purpose of the meeting was or the the questions were but then the next day I remember being separated from my family and this was a, this was a really really traumatic moment for for my sister and myself my sisters and myself and my mom I remember when they were taking us away and bringing us to the car, this this roar of, of of crying and love that came from my mom, and it was it was like the roar um, of Leonidas in the movie Three Hundred when he's at the end of the movie and he's yelling because you know he he loves his country, he loves his wife, but th this was my mom because she loved us, you know, our, uh, you know, my sister and I, my sisters and I, and it was just such a weird moment because. I didn't understand why. I didn't recognize why they didn't see what we wanted, what I wanted, which was to say, my mom, why they didn't see that my mom had just moved into, you know, we had just moved into our own house. Why didn't they recognize that development, that growth? Why didn't they recognize that she dealt with something traumatic or what, that she was dealing with the problem? Um, but that could be, that could be addressed in a different way now looking back at it. And it really didn't make sense to me. And, and what didn't make sense to me at all uh, was even moving into our first foster home, which was which was just like moving back into a shelter, our first foster home. And I'll get more into that in the second video about my time in foster care. But we were living in an eight bedroom house or apartment. I'm uh, sorry. We were living in a two bedroom apartment with eight people. And that didn't make sense to me. And there was, you know, there was all these questions that I had that just didn't make sense. And, you know, one of the things I always say when I speak about my family experience and, and, and when child welfare agencies are involved with these families, you know, see the whole picture, recognize their strengths, recognize the weaknesses of the family, listen to the kids, listen to the family, what they want, what they need. And really for my mom, her need was us, our, you know, her kids. That was her strength. That was what made her develop and, and really go on the trajectory of going back into, you know, out of shelters, into our own home again. And taking that apart, I felt exasperated some issues and really exasperated some problems. And I always just say that, you know, the strengths and weaknesses of a family are different, but we have to recognize that and work together and moving forward. So I really appreciate you listening to this part one. I'm gonna get into part two later. Um, and the link will be shared in this post. Um, I would really, uh, encourage, you know, being involved and, and sharing your insights and thoughts on, on this part. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you.